Ladies and gentlemen, the world is officially healing. I kid you not. This this Kotaku thing that's happening right now, it has to be one of the first casualties, one of the first major casualties of Gear Gay 2.0. Ladies and gentlemen, Kotaku's editor-in-chief just resigned because she was told that she essentially has to do the job that she was hired for. <laughs> Yes, ladies and gentlemen, not just the Kotaku editor-in-chief decided to quit Kotaku because they were forced to uh, now deprioritize their clickbait news and now prioritize gamer guides and stuff that, you know, Kotaku is supposed to be doing being a gaming website and not a website for activism. These, uh, are you? do you want to call them writers at this point? I was trying to think of a word on the fly to call them, but they're really not writers. They're not journalists. They're activists, right? Like, I guess that's the simplest way of putting it. These activists... Seven of them quit, not including the editor-in-chief. We have people mass resigning. We have people melting down on Twitter. We have people going absolutely insane all because they're told that they have to do their job. So let's get into this article, guys, from Phantom Pulse. But of course, before we do, if you are new here, just consider hitting that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it and like the video to push us out into that YouTube algorithm. So it says, two weeks ago, senior editor at Kotaku, Alyssa Mercante, wrote a deliberately misleading hit piece against gamers in defense of the degenerate at Sweet Baby Inc. and their toxic CEO of terrorism who got caught forcing gaming companies to adopt DEI in game development, which in turn kicked off Gamergate 2.0. Now, ladies and gentlemen, really quick, since we're on the subject of Alyssa Mercante, apparently she has found her calling. Alyssa Mercante is now going to be focusing on writing hit pieces against YouTubers, ladies and gentlemen, and she's going to start off with Melanie Mack. This is a story that I'm going to cover on Hypnocast, and it's also a story that I'm going to make a separate video on, so stay tuned for that in the future. But yes, this woman is actu actually going to start doing this, and I can only imagine the amount of lies and story spinning that she's going to do when it comes to YouTubers. It says, using the usual legacy media tactics reminiscent of Gamergate 1.0, the hit piece gaslight, uh, gaslit gamers and accused them of running a harassment campaign against Sweet Baby Inc. Now it appears, after two weeks of Gamergate 2.0, that the sleaze rag is going down. Yesterday, editor-in-chief Jen Glennon posted on X some personal news. I've resigned from Kotaku, and Jim Spanfeller is a herb. Now, this person, Carolyn Petit, more like Carl Petit, if you catch my drift, made a post on X and says, extremely proud of Jen for taking this ethical, you know, quote unquote ethical stance in response to profoundly misguided anti-journalism edicts from GO Media Management. Now you're probably wondering what are these, you know, anti-journalism edicts that are coming out from GO? What could it possibly be? Well, apparently they just put in a new requirement for the writers that they are supposed to deprioritize writing news articles that are essentially about politics, activism, and all this other nonsense that's not really belonging in a website like Kotaku, and they're supposed to prioritize gaming guides. They're supposed to prioritize tips and tricks. They want at least 50 guides a week from these writers. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, imagine people at Kotaku having a complete and utter meltdown over the fact that they actually have to play games now. This is the kind of people who are trying to call themselves gamers. These are the people who are trying to call themselves part of the mainstream gaming industry melting down because now they actually have to play games in order to do tips and tricks and guides and whatnot. They're also trying to pretend, you know, disingenuously, there's a lot of them pretending as if they're upset, not because they can't write about activism anymore, not because they actually have to play games now they're upset because it's too much work ladies and gentlemen it's too much work it's unrealistic work and all they want is quantity and not quality well you know what that's every fucking website that's based in gaming right now go look at honestly every other website in general go look at cbr they got an article coming out every two hours and it's all nonsense half of the time but that's because they want quantity over quality let's not pretend as if geo management or kotaku is any different from any of these other websites that run these of things so they're trying to disingenuously hide the fact that they're angry that their activism is going to be deprioritized and we have more examples of that it says jen glennon who assumed the role in editor-in-chief in october tendered her resignation on thursday in her resignation letter glennon cites the management team's recent shift to prioritize guides over news as her reason for stepping down glennon is the second editor-in-chief of kotaku since steven Tatillo's departure in 2021 succeeding patricia 
Hernandez, who was dismissed in August of 2023. Jen Glennon stepped down, ladies and gentlemen, because she didn't want to do the job she was hired for. She got in there and found, uh, basically thought that Kotaku was going to be a way for her to push her political ideology and get everybody who was working under her to do the same. Now that Geo management came striking down after this whole debacle, all of a sudden she wants to quit because she can't do it anymore. It's ridiculous, man. You got hired for Kotaku. It's not like you're working for CNN. It's not like you're working for NBC. Like you're not working for these websites that you would expect to see, you know, left wing political ideology being shoved down your throat 24 seven. That's not the kind of website Kotaku was supposed to be. And it's damn sad that that's what it became because now you alienated all these gamers. They probably would have utilized your website for what you're trying to push now. Now those gamers are gone and you have nobody else left that's going to read your stuff. The only stuff that was ever deemed successful at Kotaku was the extreme activism articles, not the minor ones, the extreme ones, like the ones about Alyssa Mercante. And the only reason they got a lot of clicks is because people wanted to meme on it. People wanted to make fun of it. People were making videos on it, telling everybody else how absolutely retarded she was. And we know that to be the truth. It's not like it was successful because it was a great writing piece. It's not. It never was. These people aren't writers. They don't know how to write, you know, anything for that matter. And then it says Glennon's resignation letter read in light of careful deliberation I have determined that the existing management structure and decision making procedures at Geo Media do not align with my values and aspirations for Kotaku and added I am firmly convinced that the choice to invert Kotaku's editorial approach prioritize guides over news is fundamentally misguiding considering the current framework of the platform this decision directly contradicts months of traffic analytics and demonstrates a remarkable disregard for the well-being of the remaining writers and editors employed here well ladies and gentlemen like i said on hypnocast last night at 9 p.m eastern every single day we do our stream except for saturdays i said it very clearly if you guys are having a problem with the fact that now you're worried about where your money's going to come from, you probably should have thought about that before you alienated more than 50% of your fan base. You probably should have thought about that before you made activism your job. You cannot complain about all of a sudden not having money to do what you want to do when you decided to make everything about activism. You were willing to risk it all. You wanted to risk all of it for your activism. And now you're here realizing that you're at the end of that battle and you lost. And now you're like, well, my family, how am I going to feed my family that's your fault you need to figure it out you need to explain to your family what you're going to be doing to try to feed them from now on because that's your decision and nobody else's then it says, as per information from a source familiar with the matter, the staff at Kotaku will now be required to produce 50 guides per week for the website. Presently, Kotaku's homepage showcases a prominent game tips and guide section at the top, occupying a space that was previously dedicated to significant stories and breaking news. Staff members have voiced their criticism of the homepage overhaul on social media, highlighting that the guides on Kotaku's primary source uh, I'm sorry, are not Kotaku's primary source of traffic. Well, that's your problem. That's because you made the website about activism. Nobody asked you to make Kotaku's website about activism. Just because your articles get a bunch of hate clicks doesn't mean you are successful. There is no financial benefit towards Kotaku for getting a bunch of hate. The tips and, and tricks and all that stuff, those guides, they don't get views because gamers have left Kotaku. Gamers don't look to Kotaku for anything. Only thing we look for Kotaku for is to see how stupid people like Alyssa Mercante are and what absolute nonsense they've put out um, recently. Then it says Alyssa Mercante, who covered for Sweet Baby Inc., is clearly upset about this offensive pivot from the woke propaganda to games, tips, and guides, and posted on X the fact that leadership wanted to aggressively pivot what Kotaku does in the midst of a harassment campaign levied against me and the site for an original piece of reporting that was the second most read story for over a week is telling. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen the fact that your hate piece wasn't even number one is hilarious to me that's just that's just that's hilarious to me in and of itself but the fact that you want to pretend as if kotaku is doing something great right like oh this is what you're pivoting away from what kotaku does what does kotaku do what does kotaku do other than make hit pieces on gamers like what what does kotaku do it's a website for gamers that makes hit pieces on gamers that doesn't make any sense so of course it's going to be one of the most viewed stories because you were attacking gamers and you were openly lying about Sweet Baby Inc. and everything else under the sun to run damage control for your friends. Now you're going to be out of a job very soon and you're going to have to go back to sex work, ladies and gentlemen. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.